Perfect. Okay, everything's good. Okay, everything's good. There it is. All right, and we are set. All right, so now I just need to... Okay, so you're out on the balcony and you can start to see that there's been commotion just going on for days, or er, for like a couple of days now. And uh, it's just running through. You see a lot of people that are just like briskly walking back and forth between shops and one of them catches your eye. Above the door frame, you see um, kind of like a little sign that has a picture of a blue book on it. And as you enter, you notice that there's somebody manning a shop here and just let me make sure I get e there we go okay so in this room you can see three separate bookshelves um, along the left hand side of the wall a table in the middle there's a lady that's uh, scrying and you know making notes um, you can see a cage full of snakes at the back end of the room and as well as another studying area on the top right So we're going to play this, so we're going to play this like this is the first time you've gotten there. Well, it is. <laughs> yeah, but you weren't studying there at the start. No, no, like, uh, this is, like, right after the last session there. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, whatever they did is whatever they did, and it, I was just like, all right, I ate, I'm done here, I need a break from you guys, I'm going to go wander around, have a walk, and, ooh, there's a book above this door. Yeah, I'm ooh, intrigued. piece of candy. <laughs> Yep, basically. <laughs> right on, dude. So I'll let you take the show. Uh, pretty birds following you around, lumbering back and forth like a bird would be walking. And he follows you okay. into the shop and says, Friend! Nice. Pretty. Oh. <laughs> and that's all you really hear from him. I'm just going to look at him. Um, do I know you? Ah, friend. Made from group. And he shows you the contract. And it's uh, kind of like the same contract you have with everybody's picture on it, only his was etched in on his. Oh, okay. I look at it. I look at him. Okay. And Wester's just going to roll with it. It's like, it's just like, all right. Uh, well, yeah, Wizard did we've got it. Another, uh, we've got another act to our little freak show here. Just roll with it at this point. <laughs> yep. It's kind of shrugs and looks around the room that she's in there. And I uh, guess I'm going to... I see there, there's someone in the room there, so I'm just going to wander up to the table there, I guess, and go, uh, hello. Aha, greetings, friend. My name is Amidala. How may I assist you? Oh, uh, i just kind of bored, waiting for the airship to get where it's going, and saw that there's books here. I like books. Ah, a fellow knowledge seeker, I see. Well, these books aren't just for everybody. Apologies. In order to read our vast superior knowledge, you must become an intern. Yes. It won't cost you anything, but uh, your nights will be spent studying and me teaching you about the world abroad. And she kind of puts her arm up in the air in a very, like, uh, flourish of fashion and kind of points towards, like, all of her accolades up on the wall behind her. And you can kind of see that she's been nominated for artistic works. She's been nominated for, uh, like, uh, very specific categories in, like, dungeon crawling and stuff like that. She seems to know a lot. Oh, holy shit. Well, jeez, don't threaten me with a good time. That's kind of what Wester's thinking to herself there. So it's like, um, yeah, okay. Okay, so here's how it's going to work. So whenever... <coughs> Whenever you're about to do a long rest, you have to pick what your character is doing at the end, kind of like you did in the previous session. Okay. And that'll basically mean upon the next time you play, uh, there'll be more information added that you would get. But we're going to fast forward through that part and act as if you were interning with her for a full 24 hours already. Okay, gotcha. All right. So she's going to walk up to you and she's like, very well. Uh, what uh, pertains your fancy? Do you desire information of a specific sort? Well, um, it might be good to learn a bit more about, uh, about where we're going. Um, er er Earnhardt was the town's name, I believe? Uh, that is true. The, yeah, Earnhardt, yeah. What, what do we have on Earnhardt here? 
Uh, we have very little on Earnhardt, unfortunately, but you can find that somewhere else in town. But the closest thing we have available is possibly some history of Talmaria might assist you in their dealings, or maybe even perhaps how to uh, acquire nutritious value when you're out in the desert, perhaps? Ooh, that both that sounds very interesting on both counts. She's going to just make a quick roll here. Sure. All right, she looks you up and down and she's like, ah, you have the green scale, do you? She's basically referring to your snake like parts. We never discussed what color are your scales. Uh, just regular green, I, I guess. Then. Okay, then take what I said as gospel then. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and Wester just kind of flustered a bit, and it's just like, uh, it's like a skin condition or something. I had it since I was little. I'm, I'm a little sensitive about it. Oh, well, perhaps some of these books might assist you. Please. The one at the top uh, right there. So he, she's referring to uh, the book that's at the very top. She's like, perhaps start there. You might find something keen. But for right now, I must tend to Lucy. Who's Lucy? She walks over, and then you see behind the cage is this giant fucking snake that's just coiled up in the center of a big heat lamp. Oh, okay. And she goes, and she goes, she, as she's walking forth, and she's like, and yes, if you wish to learn about anything to do with alchemical ingredients, it's over there. And she points to the table over to the right. Okay. Oh, man. I'm like a kid in a candy store. It's like I don't know where to start. I cannot uh, believe these fuckers didn't come in here. It blew my mind. <laughs> it made me oh, so fuck. Well. <laughs> All right, so oh, where would well. you like to start? Uh, well, I think the first thing Wester would do upon seeing the giant fucking snake there is like, uh, just kind of like, I mean, like, like the idea is that she has no idea that she's a Yuanti, but she's aware that she can like basically talk to snakes and they like listen to her and stuff as per like, yep. uh, yeah, so she'd just look at the big snake and just kind of go, uh, hi, Lucy. <laughs> and she just goes, <laughs> she's like swinging her head back and forth. Now, I must tell you ahead of time that um, it takes uh, a quite a long time for you to research in each of these categories. And if you devote right. an, and if you devote an entire day to it, you can only research two out of the four things here. Okay. And this won't so, take up your your game time when you meet up with the group. This is all in between. This is a, what I like to call a fever dream that has no bearing on the story whatsoever. Right. Okay. Cool. So it'd be like, it'd be like I say I'm going to start doing this or whatever. Like it. Like I don't know how much game time has passed for them. While Pretty they much. Were playing exactly. You're just going to have so, to roll with it. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. We'll we'll just see where it ends up. Um, the what 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 was the top right corner with the H again? Uh, the H is everything to do about herbalistics. Right. So we had herbalistics. We had like the potion making stuff on the table. We had the books about uh, geez, survival. And... You have uh, survive. Do you see G, F, and E? Uh. Here, I'll do I don't see G, F, and E. They must be, like, on top of the bookshelves or something. Okay, I see them now. I see the G anyway. There you go. You should be able to see them all now. Cool. All right, so uh, out of E, F, G, H, do you, and you said you already see H, correct? Yes. Okay, so which uh, you can pick one to start with, and we'll say it takes you eight hours to study through. Oh, okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, just like, oh man, where to start? Okay, so er so herbalism uh, honestly, on the right. Uh, yeah. Research about something to do with you up in the top at E. F is history of uh, Talmaria, and G is yep. something to do with survivalism. Okay. Well, I rolled a four. And I was like, uh, those books are really tempting, but I'm curious as to what's on the table. Let's go have a look over here. 
Very good. So over the course of the next eight hours, you see this complete compendium derived um, from supplies that the ship has actually come across. But you notice something very peculiar. You notice these aren't exactly normal uh, alchemical ingredients. This seems to be things that are only available in the desert. Okay. And I will push this towards you. Okie dokie. This is your potion atlas. These are all the different kinds of crafting ingredients for alchemy. Oh, I see. So feel free to read through those for a moment. Yeah, a lot of them are fairly standard desert things, but then there's some more... Uh, Un unknown stuff. Exotic. Yeah. yeah. There's some more exotic stuff, like uh, like Venus fly trap sap. Like, that's something you'd see in more like an Amazon jungly kind of place, right? So, yep. Like, that, that sticks out like a sore thumb compared to all these desert ingredients. Frog eye, I don't think you'd find too many frogs in the desert either. Depends. You might come well, across some oasises, right? Yeah, yeah, I guess, I guess, I uh, guess that that would explain some of this stuff. Yeah, okay. Urchin flesh. Yep. Uh. Oh, oh, like that, like urchin yeah, it's, creatures. It, yeah, it's yeah, it's probably okay. spelled wrong. Okay, gotcha. My my brain just went to like, isn't that what they call like homeless kids? <laughs> and it's like, oh uh... god. Right on. <laughs> So yeah, that's yeah. going to be your crafting. So this is basically anything that you get in regards to alchemy is only going to be these things. It's nothing to... And okay. if you want to build a potion <clears throat> that is from D&D &D Works, you would have to provide me with the blueprint itself. Like say, well, okay. uh, how do I build a just a regular health potion? Well, it's the same as regular D&D, &D, but you would have to acquire the materials from either a specific vendor or back in Telmeria. Yeah, and just kind of mess about with it. So yep. uh, th this image is going to always be accessible. Yep, it's open to the group okay. now. Uh, while while studying, though, like uh, I'm pretty sure Wester would like take out uh, some of her parchment and just kind of make a list of all these alchemical ingredients there. Yep, for sure. So yeah, yeah. Why so didn't I they come here first? Fuck! It's the door right next to the fucking bar. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows? Well, I will use one of my sheets of parchment. Just and I'm just updating this for uh, my own inventory. So yes. Plus, better. if you want to add it into notes later, I can delete this to make room on my computer for other shit eventually too. So I'm okay. gonna, I'm gonna leave it here till the end of the act, and then everybody's got to make notes, and then I delete everything. All right. All right. All right, my map is back up and we're back in the research facility. Ba -dum -ba -dum. So don't worry about it too much for scrying it down now. I'll actually give a hand with that later too. Oh, I I'm, uh, I'm just updating notes for the session since we oh, got cool. Fry here to take them. Oh, cool. <laughs> Yeah, because I plan on putting this as a solo video for everybody to watch, and I'm actually going to cut it down and, like, just put it to regular shit, so hopefully they'll like it. I like uh, I like it when one person plays D&D, &D, then I can make a little fucking, like, cutscene out of it. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Boom, boom, boom. So, yeah. Air. I don't even know how to spell Airheart, but someone could change it later if they really want to, I guess. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. So, I guess, I guess, uh, I guess Wester is just studying up on all these alchemical ingredients and combinations just like ooh, this is like super interesting and from time we, we to time just, the... we were just talking about this over over 
over lunch. Exactly. So, like, you you take the tome out and you go to the eatery and you're, like, also eating there when you're hungry and drinking and then bringing the book back to study. And then from time to time, the innkeeper he, uh, checks up on you and so does the chick in the uh, library. And she just keeps, like, bringing you little, like, finger foods to, like, satiate your uh, curiosity. She has a lot of really nice, like, bonbons, so to speak. All right, so you basically have all that knowledge stitched into your brain now. Yeah. Okay, so eight hours effectively pass that way, just kind of yep. reading, snacking as necessary. Pretty bird just kind of squawking to itself silently in the corner. <laughs> yep, he's just, he's basically your bodyguard right now. Okay, cool. Unless you want to interact with him and ask him questions, that's about it. All right. All right, next up on the list, I'll get you to pick another one too. All right. There's no like way to roll a D3, is there? Uh, right click on or actually, okay. actually no. Uh, I'll roll a D4, but I'll say the top two numbers would be about the green scale condition because that's something she would naturally be quite curious about. So I'll kind of weigh the roll towards that. Uh, nope, uh, we're going over here to look about, uh, look about, uh, I think this was <coughs> about Talamira. Uh, this one was all about, uh, uh, survivalist things and what to do in case of an emergency. Right. Okay. All right, so, uh, eight hours later, like, you kind of come across the room and, like, the, the keeper has noticed that you're done and you have a short little conversation about what you've learned and uh, she seems very thankful that you're actually taking the internship very seriously. And she says, ooh, I think you'll like that volume over there. And she points you over towards that. And this is what you end up finding. Uh, let me see here. Do 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 do. Boom. Ensry's survival guide. Oh, ho, ho. Plus one to survival. Knowledge is a power. Exactly. So I'm giving you guys basically incentives to study. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> nice. All right. So that's what you end up finding. And uh, that'll obviously only be available when you're in the desert. It won't be until then. So you can just write that in your inventory. And then if the thing ever changes, then we'll alter your character sheet. All right. I am like three to five steps ahead of you on that. <laughs> Perfect. All right. So now, uh, so that's been about, we'll say about 15 hours. Uh, you're like really starting to feel tired. And uh, yeah, you're pretty hungry too. Yeah. Boy. Well, that, uh, I'm tired. I've been here all day, haven't I? She goes, yes. Yes. Knowledge is power, after all. You cannot learn anything without sacrifice, especially of one's time. Yeah. It was a good day. I haven't had a good day in a while. So much crazy stuff has been happening. It says, well, if you feel tired, you may retreat. And there are other, you know, full meals available over at the bar, if you wish. Oh, yeah. Food before bed sounds like a good idea. Right on. All right, Pretty Bird's going to make his way out because he didn't learn a fucking thing in this entire show. Do 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 do. <laughs> he could barely talk. I don't think he could read either. Uh, crap, I forgot. What was the snake's name? Oh. Started with an E. 
If you forgot two, it's not important. <laughs> Call it Edith. Edith. There we go. Edith's the fetus. Yeah. So just on the on the on the way out of the of the library before I go grab something to eat before bed, just you know, look over the snake, wave, bye, Edith. <laughs> yep. All right. So you ventured down the walkway. You notice that. Uh, the terrain below uh, the airship is starting to change and you can kind of see more hilly patterns than anything. It almost looks like as if the, like the sand that's on like during a very windy day and you can kind of see a lot of the fucking sand is starting to accumulate up on the walkways a little bit. All right. Okay. Uh, just kind of like, just kind of like sand, like just kind of billowing up from below as the airship flies over. Yeah, I guess. exactly. Okay. All right, and now you are in the bar. You can kind of see, like, um, you notice that there's two gentlemen at the back end of the bar. Um, you do know them to be Quinn and Gastaff because I'm giving you the same knowledge as the rest of them. Because because uh, 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 Orthlan actually like showed them the uh, the contract that you guys okay. all of your names okay. were on it, so he, they know who you are, and they know that okay. you're a part of their group. Gotcha. All right, and then you got down at the bottom left, you got a couple guys eating and drinking and three people up at the bar. The bartender waves you in. Greetings, customers. Come on in. Well, uh, we've got a table free right here, so I'm gonna, you know, just kind of sit down there. Awesome. Motion to Pretty Bird to just have a seat because why not? <laughs> right on. So the bartender grabs a couple of ales to start and brings them around the corner and sets them down and says, Ah, yes, and just to let you know, we have proper adult entertainment for the night at four price, obviously. She kind of gives you a little wink, wink, nudge, nudge. And I'll get you to roll a perception check. All righty. You can actually see over on the other end of the bar, there's actually a dice game going on between three of the, uh, the three bartender or the one bartender that's left back there and the three, uh, patrons. And you can kind of see that they're over there gambling. Oh, okay. Uh, Westress suddenly feels a little more awake than she did a couple moments ago. Due to her, uh, background as a charlatan she may have cheated at dice once or once or three times in her life before <laughs> <laughs> is that what you're saying to the bartender or is that just what you're thinking oh no 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 she would not say that out loud but she's just kind of thinking to herself oh okay maybe, maybe we got a couple suckers here i do like winning money <laughs> and she just goes and anything to eat gentlemen and you can kind of see pretty bird go Right, friend. And she goes, ah, oh, Pritt, you've been here too long. I already know what you want. And you just see her, like, whip out, like, this little plastic bag and throw it on the table. And it's a bunch of crackers. Wester just kind of laughs at that. It's <laughs> like, um... And he's gobbling them, too. Like, no regard for plastic swallowing kind of eating. Like, he's just going oh, to God. End. It's ironic that his name is Pretty Bird because he's actually kind of disgusting. Yep, he's a horrid thing to uh, to see. Yeah. Uh, Wester just kind of sip at the ale that was brought to her. Mmm, tasty. Um, what's your special here? I'm hungry. It says ah, oh, we have the monk's ale and we also have some roast duck. Very good, very good. And she says, but if meat is not your thing, we also have the finest veggies from around the land and some from Talmaria too. Roast duck. That sounds tasty. All of a sudden, you see Pretty Bird look up and look towards you and look a little afraid. I'm not that hungry, pretty bird. <laughs> He's I going, could at best uh, have like a finger or two from you, maybe. <laughs> you see pretty bird go, friend, not hungry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, friend, not food. 
Then he slowly goes back to, like, picking the crackers out with his beak very slowly, keeping an eye on you as he munches. Nice. All right. What would you like to order? Oh, that I want that roast duck. Let's roast do it. Roast duck? Okay, so you see her disappear back into the bar, and you kind of see her just preparing shit. And, uh, yeah, she basically informs you that it'll take about 10, 15 minutes to cook up. Okay. Yeah, so, uh, in the meantime there, uh, while waiting for food, Wester is just kind of between, uh, just, like, double-checking the, uh, the list of alchemical ingredients she wrote down, taking a gander over at the dice game, uh, flicking through her notes about uh, desert survival, taking a peek at the dice game. Nice. Kind of just kind of fidgeting in general between a few things, waiting for for lunch there. Right on. Um, as you're just kind of keeping an eye on everything, a door opens, and then you can hear footsteps behind you. Like right behind me. Yep. Okay. Kind of like a... Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I didn't even notice there was a door there. Just kind of... Yeah, so you can see... shoulder and see... So you kind of see, like, this blonde, very beautiful woman step out. She's human. And she kind of okay. looks over towards you and gives you the friendly nod. And uh, she walks over to one of the tables. And then you can see a little small discussion. And then you can see her... Uh, she's kind of like, kind of beginning to have like a, like a little bit of an argument with the guy. And then all of a sudden you can see her skin turn black and her ears point, uh, pointed and she turns into a drow and you see this gentleman and her, he stands up and goes, Oh, the beautiful dame. And you see them disappear into the back room. And the door closes. Well. Uh, they're running a brothel in the back room here. <laughs> Fucking right. <laughs> oh yeah, she was trying to pimp shit out to fucking Orthland, but Orthland was having none of it. Yeah. Uh, Lester's suddenly feeling a little less comfortable being in here, but she's hungry and she'll at least uh, get her food into her. Very good. All right, so about uh, 10 minutes roll by and you can actually start to smell duck, like a nice Peking duck or like a sweet and sour teriyaki style dish just coming from the far end of the room. And you can kind of see every once in a while you hear cheers and ahs. And you can kind of see that uh, the mini bartender that's up on the stool just on the far left seems to be taking these guys for all they're worth. Okay. So what would you like to do? Uh, delicious drink. Yeah, uh, just keeping the mm. keeping the notes up to date. <laughs> gotcha. Yeah, there's there's a lot less uh I guess downtime when it's just one on one like this there, so Exactly. Yeah, it moves pretty quick. Um so I'm still waiting on my my foods there. Yeah, it'll be another few minutes. Yeah. Well, it's coming, so there's no need to to rush it. Wester's pretty patient. She'll just kind of sit at the table and very good. Keep an eye on Pretty Bird to make sure he doesn't make too much of a mess with his plastic slash maybe a bit of crackers eating. <laughs> so the bartender returns a few moments later and sets down with this beautiful dish. Like it looks like it was dressed by Gordon Ramsay himself. Holy shit. All right. Yeah. So uh, she says, Bon appetit. And if you need anything, I'll just be over there. And she just points towards the bar and she exits and. You can kind of see her go back and sit down and kind of put her hand on the shoulder of her assistant and they kind of smile at each other and you see them begin to game with the other patrons. Okay. Everyone's playing there, but Wester's hungry first, so she's going to eat this extremely delicious looking meal. 
<laughs> there you go. So as you're eating, like you can see people coming and going as well um, over the next probably half an hour. Um, you can actually see that the gentleman from the back room returns about half an hour later. Um, a couple of the uh, a couple of the uh, the patrons have since gone. Let me just get rid of them here. Boom. Boom. And there's one left as you finish your meal. All right. So Pretty Bird's looking over at you just kind of like open-eyed. Like, how could you eat one of my kind? <laughs> but he keeps most of his comments to himself and just continues to eat the last little bit of remnants of crackers. You can kind of see him scratching with his talons to try to open the plastic bag up further. He's having a fucking time. See, I would help him, but it's far too amusing to just watch him struggle with it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, well, uh, I guess after polishing off her food there, uh, maybe try to get a quick game of dice in before bed there. There you oh, go. Just, just going to wander over here and see what everyone's up to. Very so good. There's room over there now. As uh, as you approach, you can kind of see that uh, the last patron's very upset. He just lost all of his money, and he's just he kind of just waves a nod at you as he walks out the door. And all you hear is, "Ah, another player, shall we? Would you care to challenge uh, me to a game of dice?" Uh, the food was good, but the dice might. I I like dice. Let's try. Very good. So you can see her. Uh, each of them set down a cup. And they drop one gold on the table. Okay. So metagaming, this is what we call liar's dice. Uh-huh. So everybody shakes four dice and hits it on the table. And then people make claims. Like, I, ha I think there are two ones. And then okay. somebody else would be like, I think there's two threes. And each one bets up and up and up. And you're only allowed to look at your own dice. And then when you think somebody is bluffing you call them on it and then you take their money but because okay. that's too complicated to do we're just going to do dice rolls okay all right so um so the first one sets it down and uh the bartender says i'll go first and you all three of you shake your uh cabinets at the same time and slam them down oh and right. you uh have a look at your dice and you can see four fours so the bartender says, I'll go first, and I'll claim two ones, and I'll get you to roll a perception check. Okay. Oops, I didn't actually grab it there. My mistake. That's all right. As uh, she makes her claim, you can see, like, in the corner of her eyes, she's looking at you smiling, just kind of like she just wants that bod. <laughs> and I'll get you to roll an insight check. Uh, 15, you, you're pretty confident she's telling the truth. Yeah, yeah. No, no like, uh, usual... Uh tells of like a lie there yeah so i'm just gonna kind of just smile back like as charming as i can okay okay all right so now the next bartender will take her turn and she looks underneath and she says i call three threes and i'll get you to roll another insight on this one okay You're fairly confident that she's telling the truth. All right. And now it goes to you. All right. Well, uh, Westra, Westra knows how the game works, and she rolled nothing but four, so she knows one of them's going to call her out on it. So what she's going to... She's going to say that she has four fours, but she's going to try to look, like, really, like, like uncomfortable... Or like she doesn't know how to play while she's doing it, just kind of like um. Okay. I have, I have, I have, I have four of uh of of four. All right, I'll get you to like, roll the deception. Like even just like, 
Yeah, like just kind of like smile and yep. just kind of hundred percent. All right. <laughs> All right. So you kind of set a baited trap, and oh, yeah. and you say four fours, and they kind of look at you and they're like. Aha, Zynga! So the one on the right says, I call your bluff. And then everybody flips up their uh, their dice, and it's shown that you are, in fact, telling the truth. Add yep. one gold to your inventory, and she's out. Woo! I want a gold! <laughs> right on. So the bartender says, well, one more time, shall we? And she puts all of her dice up into her cup and starts to shake them. Are you yeah. on a solo right now? Are you streaming it? Holy fuck, it's a honky. What's I up? have been watching you the past fucking week. Okay? Oh, like, what's I up, dude? You know, like, we, like, we were pissy at each other, but as always, like two or three days later, I was fine. But I have fucking C-Div again, so like, I'm fighting that. That's what I told everybody. Everybody was Let's really fucking worried, there. and I was just no, like, no, no, you just need a couple of days. You just need a Me couple of Sean days. Me and Sean do this, like, every day or two. Like, this is not, this is not right. a new situation to me and Sean. Okay? I, had, I said like, six Sean months. Sean's a cocksucker. I'm an asshole. <laughs> blah, blah, blah. This is how it plans out. The problem is, is we're both good friends, and we can't stay away from each other. Well, there you go. Yeah, I You're pretty much, yeah, I pretty much told everybody that just not worry about it, let it cool down, and we'll have a serious discussion about it later. Like the whole reason why a Caitlin... serious discussion about it, it's fucking over. It no, is... I just, I just mean uh, like a discussion as if you're going to be continuing to play with us or not, like that kind of thing. Like that's all I was curious about. Well, I've, I haven't stopped playing anything else with you ever. There you go. But uh, right now, what we're doing is we're doing, uh, because there's nobody else available, we were doing a, uh, a uh, Westra solo story to catch up him up to the rest of the group. Yeah. So yeah, we're just kind of uh, doing the last little bit of shit here, and then uh, I'm kind of waiting to see if Brian's coming. Brian said that he's going to try to make it tonight, but he had a lot of phone calls to do, so it's random whether or not he'll be able to join. Right, he's got a lot going on. Yeah, exactly. I feel fucking bad for that guy. Like, we had a heart, heart like, fucking four or five days ago. Oh, yeah. And, like, I didn't realize, like, I don't know, like, I don't know, I don't want to say too much on that, how well Jack knows him or whatnot, so. Oh, we had a big blowout conversation between myself, Jack, or myself. Jack, were you there when Brian got here? No, you weren't. No, you took the night off. That's right. It was me, Cote, yeah. and, uh, me, Cote, brian and victor and he just basically spilled his guts and told us everything oh man yeah it's a fucking dude it's so fucking rough like dude how the fuck do you have sisters that don't know what the fuck's going on yeah exactly but uh so we're just gonna put that in the pocket for right now um we're uh we're just uh we're streaming on twitch for his solo story so if you want to, so if you want to i can add you in as well i have your character token here Actually, no. You, you'd have to level up your character, actually. Yeah, I haven't played in fucking, like, two weeks, dude. All right, there you go. So you level up your character to level two, and then we'll talk about it on the next break. <laughs> you guys are still only fucking level two? Oh, yeah. Ugh. Yeah, like, like this is going to be a campaign that's a lot different than the other one. My favorite part is that fucking Discord is available to where your stream just pops up, and I can click on it. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Pretty cool. <gasps> Speaking of which, you need to fucking uh, show me how to do that because I'm stupid. <laughs> yeah, once we get finished what we're doing here, I'll definitely run you through it. <laughs> yeah, uh, I will watch and mute myself so you guys can keep doing your thing. Right on, man. Well, thanks for dropping in. All right. Mr. Westra, so the cups drop, and you each drop a uh, drop a cup right in front of each other, and you're both looking at each other, eyeing up everything. And uh, yep. I'll, I'll get you to roll 4d6. All right. So those are the numbers you've gotten. Okay. All right, she rolls hers. Okay, so she says, my lovely lady, why don't you start us off? Oh, okay. Uh, 
I have I have one six. Hmm. I'm gonna call two sixes, she says. Alright. Uh how does she how does how does she look as she says this? I'll get you to roll an insight check. Okay. You're fairly confident she's telling the truth. Okay. Okay, well, I've got, I've got a five, too. So how it would have to happen is you would have to call more dice. You'd have to, in order to match it, you would have to be three of something, four of something, that kind of thing. So you called one sex, she called two sex. Now you have to call three of something, and then she would call oh. four of something. So that's how liar's dice work. Oh, okay. So I basically got a sell. <laughs> oh, well, uh, that's, that's, a, that's amusing. Um, I, I've got, I've got even more sixes. I've, I've got, uh, I've got three of them. Okay. I'll get you to roll a deception check. Yeah. She looks you up and down. She goes, <clears throat> drat. Very well. I will call four threes. You already called two sixes. Now she's calling four threes. Yeah, because you're allowed to go up. Like yeah, 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 like try try to be like, oh no, I was I, w I was lying last time, but I'm totally telling the truth now. Lester's not having any of that. She 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 knows she's got her at this point. I think. Hmm. I I think that that's that sounds far fetched. Uh, I I think you're lying. She goes, well, flip your dice and try me, boy. And you're allowed to do an insert insight check to see if she's serious. Okay. You're unsure. Okay. Well, uh, I've made the call, so... Flip them over? Yeah. Now, I wonder how I can show this to you. Because you're not going uh... to believe me. <laughs> you fucking rolled four threes, didn't you? No, she rolled three threes and tried to bluff. But it turns out you have the 4-3. So she's technically won. Now I'm going to get you to roll a perception check. Oh, okay. All right. As you go ahead and you see that she's telling the truth, you actually spot in her hand a fifth six-sided die. Okay. And she and she's like and she doesn't notice that you noticed. Okay. Um. <laughs> let's have let's have a little bit of let's have a little bit of fun with this here. Uh. Ooh. Yeah, Westra is uh, just gonna just smile innocently, and uh, she's just gonna lift up uh, her hand and make a mage hand. Okay. Ah, oh, cool. And so <laughs> that's awesome. I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna like the mage hand is just gonna like, like just kind of jut out of her her right hand that she holds up. It's like a like kind of translucent blue ethereal hand and uh it's just gonna kind of float over and just grab that one die and just kind of hold it up on the table and wester is just kind of kind of look at it and go well i didn't know you were we played this game with five dice here <coughs> she looks over to you it's like are you are she's like visibly like shaken and she's like are, are you you accusing me of something Well, uh, isn't this the dice, one of the die that you rolled, uh, 
that you rolled last time? How come you have it there? And there's... Yeah. Five isn't the same number as four. I'm, co I'm, I'm confused. You're... Do you play with five dice? Was I supposed to roll another one? <sighs> you... You... Like... Foul little devil. And she's like visibly getting angry. She's like, you dare... You dare. This had nothing to do with it. This, like, I did nothing wrong, and I'll get you to roll an insight check. <laughs> You're fairly confident she's full of shit. Okay. <laughs> and I will usher you to the quests. Okay. And a side quest has appeared that you've completed. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Nice. So yeah, you just got your team 25 XP. Woo woo! I'm so, the greatest! So she goes, please, please don't tell anybody. Here, 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 take this and just keep this to yourself for God's sakes. And she throws you 10 gold. Okay. And then she... uh, Westra's gonna Westra's gonna smile extremely innocently and just add and the food and the food and the food <sighs> and tomorrow's food too. Ooh. Ah, it's free. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There you go. Is that any better, Honky? I assume Echo Kills means there's an echo going on in the background. I'm not sure. It takes like 45 seconds for him to hear what I say anyway. Oh, uh, okay. So I kind of toned her down a little bit. Right on. So there you go. You've completed an active quest and you just see the bartender go back off to his own business. All right. Uh, Wester is just going to stand up and stretch there. It's like, yeah, that was a good way to <laughs> This one. Nice. So now you have. Uh, so now that you've been fed and you've completed your quest, uh, pretty much all you really have left to do is either you can go exploring or you can rest for eight hours and go back to studying. It's up to you. Well, uh, Wester already spent an unhealthy amount of time studying today, namely the entire day. Mm -hmm. uh, so as much as the call of knowledge is there. West Westra's uh Westra's wise enough to know that uh, her body needs rest as well, so she would totally be heading. Uh, she'd totally be turning in for the night at this point. Very good. All right, so I'm just going to put you and Prit back down here. Okay. And uh, we're going to end the live stream there for a short moment, and then we're going to restart it up. That way, I can post this as your own solo adventure, and then we can get into main story quest stuff, or we can get into whatever. Okay, so we're just going to take a five-minute break. I'm going to post this to YouTube for the other people to see, and then I'm going to start a new one that is Western Solo Adventure 2. Okay. All right, so everybody watching, we'll be right back.